Hi, welcome back to my kitchen. This morning, I was at a market and I bought myself about 750 gram of pork belly over here. I'm going to make a Chinese crispy roast pork. In my mother tongue, it's called siu bak, or in Cantonese, it's called siu yuk. It involves two steps. The first step is to prepare and marinate the pork belly which I'm going to do today. And the second step, I'll do it tomorrow, which is to roast the pork belly. The first thing we need to do is to poke, to poke a lot of holes on the skin side of the pork belly. Okay, I've got my pot here with water. I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt as well. Now the next thing I'm going to bring it to a boiling, boiling temperature. The water is boiling right now so I'm going to immerse the pork belly in here. Okay, that's all it is. I'm just going to remove it. Now what I want to do is, I'm quickly rinse it in cold water. I'm just going to let the pork sit there to cool down before I remove it from the cold water. So I'm going to dry it with a kitchen paper towel. Wish me luck, I'm going to try and poke lots of holes on top of the skin. Right, I'll try with the metal skewer. Okay, it works. This is like leather, basically. Trying to poke the hole right through. I think I've got enough holes, so the next thing I want to do is to marinate the pork. First, to rub it with a little bit of Chinese cooking wine. Next, I want to add the five spice powder. Well, I'm gonna add about, uh, not an, about this much, it's about a teaspoon of five spice powder, white pepper. Okay, that should be enough. Salt. That should be enough. And then I'm gonna rub it in. and on the side as well. Okay, what I should have done is, I need to slice this so I can marinate the inside. Not all the way through. I should have done this earlier, but now what I do is, I'm gonna try and marinate the inside as well. So that's it, that's the first step, and that's the technique is to make sure that you poke a lot of holes on the skin side to get that crispiness of the crispy roast pork. I'm gonna put it in the fridge and leave it overnight. So the time is two o'clock today. I'm gonna to let it sit for 24 hours. So I'll cook it at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Today, I'm going to roast the pork. Now, what I have here is the pork that I removed from the fridge. Before I left it in the fridge to sit for 24 hours, I wrap it up with aluminum foil and put a layer of coarse sea salt on top of the skin. So this is what I've done yesterday. What I'm going to do next is to roast the pork, still with the foil wrapped around the pork itself, so the meat itself can be nice and juicy and with the salt still sitting on top so that way it can absorb all the moisture when it's baked in the oven. So I have preset the oven at 140 degrees. The oven which I have here is a fan forced oven so the temperature itself is going to be much hotter than a normal conventional oven. The alarm just gone off. I'm gonna remove the pork from the oven. 
make sure I have the gloves on. So what I'm going to do now is to scrape off the sea salt from the top of the pork. And before I do that, I'm going to increase the temperature of the oven to 200 degrees. I'm going to remove the foil first. Next, I want to do is to brush it with rice vinegar. This is meant to give the skin a little bit more crispy. This is the rice vinegar that I'm using. It's from Taiwan. Okay, the oven is now preheated to 200 degrees. I'm going to change from baking to grilling. There are two settings over here. One is maximum, the other one is medium heat. I'm going to set it to medium heat. And I'm going to put it on the lowest tray because the oven, as I said, is a fan force oven and it's going to be too hot. I don't want the skin to be burnt. So I'm putting this back. Oh! <laughs> this is crazy. The apartment comes with a hot wire alarm right next to the oven and the stove. Every time it gets too hot, the alarm just goes off. Now, the pork is right in the oven right now. I'm going to let it sit in there and to grill it for 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes. I'm going to have to keep an eye just to make sure that the skin doesn't get burned. Okay, I've just checked the pork itself. I think the oven is too hot. I'm going to lower it down to 180. I have been checking my pork just to make sure that the skin doesn't get burnt. And it's five minutes to go, but I think it's enough. So I'm going to stop the grilling and remove the pot right now because it looks good from what I can see. It actually looks okay. Um, it's a little bit brown, but I think it's still okay. So I'm gonna let it sit before cutting it to have a look. Oh, just look at that. Just look at this. You can see it's, the juice is moist still. Okay, I'm going to taste this. It looks good. Now everybody said that it's so easy to make a crispy roast pork. Well, it looks easy, but the technique itself is not so simple. To get that crispiness on the skin, and yet the meat itself must be soft, tender, succulent, and juicy. Getting that combination itself is not that simple. The reason is that it has to do with the oven, the timing, and the temperature, and how long you actually roast it in the oven. A much simpler way, which a lot of people are doing right now, is using an air fryer. But I guess it takes the fun out of cooking. I do enjoy making this second time round, and definitely it does taste better than the first time. And the skin itself has more bubble and crunchiness than the first time. Flavor-wise, it is nice, it's still yummy, and it has that flavor of a five spice powder. Will I do it again? I probably will, but really, it's much simpler just to go and buy it from the restaurant. If you enjoy watching this video, subscribe and share with your friends and family. Until then, I hope to see you next week. My name is Victor Koo. Thanks for watching.